on 3C here, and so it's a little, little longer trip in for people than they thought it would be. Brother Barham was saying it took them 23 minutes that normally takes them seven or eight minutes. So, uh, What about you guys, Brother Yoder? Did you sit through the light out there too a few times? Ah. Did the, the, made the backward cut. Good job. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and start, and uh, we'll let them trickle in as they get here. All right. And uh, let's start by singing together. Turn over to 195. 195, glory to his name. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Let's stand together to sing it. 195. Down at the cross where my Savior died Down where for cleansing from sin I cried There till my heart was a blood applied Glory to His name Glory to His name Glory to His name There till my heart was a blood applied Glory to His name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where He took me in. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. good singing and uh, let's have prayer together shall we father we thank you for another wednesday evening to gather together thank you lord for each one that has made it here this evening we do pray for those who are still traveling i told you watch them over them keep them safe and bring them into the service tonight lord i pray that you'll meet with us you'll give us what we need here in the middle of the week bless the songs uh, that we have together our fellowship the missionary prayer letter our prayer time and then as we open up your word together, may you speak to our hearts tonight and do what you would like to do in each one of our lives. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, you may be seated. 264, if you would. 264, tis the grandest theme through the ages rung. He is able, he is able to deliver thee. Let's sing that first together. Tis the grandest theme through the ages rung. Tis the grandest theme for a mortal tongue. Tis the grandest theme that the world e'er sung. Our God is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. Though by sin oppressed, go to him for rest. Our God is able to deliver thee. Is the grandest theme in the earth or main? Is the grandest theme for a mortal strain? Is the grandest theme let the world can our God is able to deliver thee? He is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. Though by sin. Tidings roll to the guilty heart, to the sinful soul. Look to God in faith, He will make thee whole. Our God is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. Oh, 
letters from the Pittman family, missionaries to Sweden. Dear praying friends, we continue to journey down the road from state to state and meeting to meeting. In the past three months, we have presented the need of the Swedish people in Ohio, West Virginia, Kansas, Kentucky, Florida, and Michigan. God has allowed us to have overlapping conferences, which is a great blessing, but takes its toll on the family. Even though we try to travel together as much as possible, our children are attending Heritage Christian School at our home church. We are so thankful for the blessing of Christian School as well as for the six new supporting churches that we have agreed to partner, that have agreed to partner with us in Sweden. The Lord has allowed me to come into contact with some young men going to Sweden, Norway, and Denmark. God has his time for each place. Even though we are not in Europe, we still go out soul winning because people are still lost and dying in the land of the free and the home of the brave. God has allowed me to lead people to Christ as we travel and go soul winning. Please pray for Alyssa in Ohio and Barbara in West Virginia to grow in the Lord. Please pray for Bridget and I as we travel to our furthest destination yet for a missions conference. November 27th, we will head to the Grace Baptist Church in Nakuru, Kenya. They have asked us to come and preach because out of their deep poverty, they know they must reach the world with the gospel of Christ. Again, we would appreciate your prayers for God's blessing and power on the preaching in Kenya and protection for Michelle and kids as we are away. We are also in need of continuing to fill our schedule for the upcoming new year. Our biggest request is that God would open the hearts of the Swedish people to receive Christ as their blessed Savior. We thank you for your faithful prayers and support as we continue to raise additional financial support during this transition. Your friends, the Pittmans. Pittmans, of course, for many years were in Ireland, and uh, they have turned that church over to a native Irish Irishman. Is that what you call that? Uh, from Ireland, and uh, he's now pastoring the church, and uh, the Lord has led them over to Sweden, and they'll be going there to establish a church and uh, plant one there. And so we praise the Lord for that. They're at a Cleveland Baptist Church up in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, all right, so we're thankful for that good report. Uh, prayer guide, anybody need one? Everybody okay? Everybody got one? Good. Look at the prayer guide tonight, and uh, of course start with the coming events. And uh, tomorrow night, Lord willing, we'll be at the CRC uh, prison. Uh, ready to do the RU Inside down there. Friday night for Reformers Unanimous right here from 7 to 9 p.m. And Saturday morning out at London from 8.30 to 10.30. And, of course, we'll have our normal uh, soul winning and bus visitation at 10 a.m. here on Saturday. And uh, then looking ahead, uh, just a note, I think that date's wrong, isn't it? The Worker Appreciation Thanksgiving service is not the, I think it's 24th, isn't it? The 24th is a Tuesday. I think 26th is Thursday. That should be the 24th. It'll be Tuesday night before Thanksgiving, not Wednesday night, okay? So uh, make sure you make a note of that. I apologize that date not being right. And uh, so there you have the upcoming events. Now, uh, up above underneath the uh, other requests, if you'd write down uh, Amy Lloyd. Uh, Amy Lloyd's mother passed away yesterday. And uh, so if you'd pray for her and her family, uh, I'm sure they would appreciate your prayers during this time. All right. On the inside, uh, we praise the Lord for the wonderful Sunday with the Turkey Dinner Sunday and the folks who received Christ their Savior and were baptized. And they had 19 at London on Saturday. And uh, the 11 returnees had 70 challenges they did. And uh, guys are really working the program and doing well. And uh, we praise the Lord for that. All right. So continue to uh, pray for those ministries and, of course, our church ministries and these on the a health list, if you'll remember them in prayer. And then, of course, we continue to pray for the, our leaders and those in authority, and uh, particularly during these days when we definitely need some leadership. We pray that God will grant us that. Uh, pray for our military and these battling cancer. And then, of course, these on the salvation list, praying for God to, to, for them to listen to people who God brings across their path, be able to lead them to Christ. And then the unreached people groups, and we pray for these and for laborers to go to the unreached people groups of the world. 
And then the missionaries highlighted tonight by Brother Pittman and their family that are now going to a new field, the field of Sweden. All right. So we want to pray for these needs tonight. Brother Wallace, I'd like you to come if you would, please. And uh, he'll lead us in our prayer this evening. And uh, you follow along with him silently as he leads us audibly in our prayer tonight. Brother Bob. Let us pray. Father, we certainly want to uh, give you all the glory and all the praise for um, how our Thanksgiving dinner came out. And Lord, what a uh, great turnout. Lord, we want to continue to praise you for that because, uh, Lord, we depend on you to bring those people in and to uh, stir their hearts, stir their spirit, that, Lord, that uh, they would uh, have a desire to uh, be fed your word and come back into your house and grow in your word. And, Father, we just uh, rely on you to work on those hearts. And, Lord, uh, it's you that adds to our church. It's you that uh, if anything comes out of this church that's any good, it's because of you. And it's, uh, Lord, just help us to continue to be faithful. I thank you for Brother Pittman's uh, faithfulness through the years of uh, being in Ireland and going to uh, missions field there and, and starting a church. And I pray that your hand will be upon him as he goes to Sweden, his new field here that uh, he feels that you've led him into. And, Lord, I just pray that uh, you'll continue to bless there, help him to grow that church there. And, Lord, we'll certainly expect to hear good things in the future about how your hand is upon the, that work there and uh, for all the people that uh, are doing your work around the world. Lord, we continue to be blessed by the good reports that we have that, uh, and how you work. And, Lord, one day we're, we're not even going to realize uh, and when we don't today, uh, the, the great work that goes on around us in the, in the world today that we have no clue. Uh, but, Lord, we, we trust you, we love you, and we thank you again for all these works that you have uh, uh, allowed us to be a part of. Lord, I pray for these unreached people groups. And, Father, uh, only you know how short the time is. And, Father, we just want to make sure that we're following your lead, that we are are uh, doing your will each day, not only for the weeks and the months and the years to come, if, it, if you deem necessary, but, Lord, even so we cry out, even so come quickly, Lord Jesus, because of the evilness of the world, how dark the world is, how man's hearts are dark. But, Lord, they were dark in the beginning, and they will still continue to be dark when you come. So, Father, we just pray that... Uh, uh, you'll have mercy upon uh, our, our nation again. And Lord, uh, just be uh, merciful to us. Be merciful to the United States of America. Uh, Lord, I, I must uh, uh, repent for our, our nation and how we've turned our backs on you. And uh, many times in the Old Testament, how one person was pointed out by you that caused Israel to sin. And Father, we, we want to be a church that you can't point a finger at us and say that we've caused the United States to sin. But we've stood up for that which is right. We've stood up for that which is good. And we stood up for that which is pure, which is your word. Lord, give us the strength to stay steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Lord, we thank you for that. Father, I do thank you for the programs that go on at the prison and, and the uh, uh, ministries there, the RU ministries and the RU ministry here that goes on in, on Friday nights. And Lord, we're certainly walking by faith and trusting you, uh, the Lord, but we're, we're being faithful and going. As Brother Andy mentioned Sunday night, we, we were faithful. We did the work that you uh, uh, put us here to do. We, we go faithfully to these prisons and to uh, give the word to these these uh, people. And Lord, I just uh, look forward to hearing some good reports. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would help uh, uh, Amy Lloyd's uh, family. Lord, give them comfort, give them strength at this time of the passing away of her mother. Lord, I pray the gospel will be preached and that people will come to know your son Jesus as their savior. And Father, we want to thank you again. We want to be always praising you for such a great God that we have, that we serve, and that we 
Lord, we try our best to live by your word. Lord, we uh, uh, now come to this time and where uh, your precious word is opened. And Lord, I don't want to just sit here and hear a bunch of words. I want you to speak to our hearts and speak to our pastor's hearts. Speak to each and every one of us, Lord, of, of, uh, from your word. And, and, and Lord, let us know exactly what you would want us to hear as individuals tonight. Lord, you're a great God. We're all your children. And Lord, we need to hear from you. We need your touch. So Father, we rely on you. We, uh, we trust you. We again want to thank you for what a great God you are. Lord, bless the rest of the service. May everything that is done here tonight be for your glory and your honor. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One hundred eighty in your hymnal. One eight zero. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God will take care of you. Let's all stand one more time as we sing. One eight zero on that first together. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. Another make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together. you may need he will provide 
God will take care of you. Nothing you ask will be denied. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. Let's sing that last all together, no matter what may be the test. God will take care of you. Let's sing that last. No matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Lean weary one upon his breast, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day. be seated. Ushers will come and we'll get ready to receive our offering tonight. We do have a guest with us this evening, Mike Robinson. Is that right, Brother Mike, back here? It's good to have you tonight, my friend. Thanks for coming in and uh, glad to have you here this evening. And uh, let's give as God has blessed us and prospered us. And Brother Pollitt, lead us in our prayer. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us where we come in and hear, can hear the word of God preached. And we pray that you'd be with our preacher now that you'd give me the exact words to say. And then we pray that you'd uh, we'd be a blessing to you and give back a portion that you've blessed us with. And that you'd spend it wisely. And we pray that you'd uh, be with the service tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs> All right, take your Bible this evening, if you would, please. And, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, if you would, please. And then you might put a finger in Acts chapter 20, Acts chapter 20, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and then Acts chapter 20. We'll read 2 Corinthians chapter 4 first. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And then if you'll look with me over at Acts 20, and verse number 24, Paul writes in verse 24, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Father, add your blessing to the reading of our scripture here this evening. And Father, I pray that you'll prepare our hearts and that each of us would the best we know how, yield ourselves to you. 
at the start of this study together this evening. And that, Lord, help us to put out of our mind things that would capture our thoughts and and keep us from focusing on what your word would say to us this evening. Spirit of God, speak to every heart and be the master teacher this evening. Help, Help the truth to come across to each of us that we might finish our course with joy. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. The the Bible makes it clear that each one of us has a ministry. Everybody here tonight as a believer in Christ, I got I got news for you. If you didn't know it already, I'll tell you now, you're in the ministry. Okay? I know sometimes you look at preachers or evangelists or missionaries and you say, well, they're in full time ministry. That's kind of a, a misnomer. Because it, it gives the indication that uh, those who aren't pastors or teachers or missionaries, that they're not in full, you're not full-time ministry. You absolutely are full-time ministry, and the Bible makes that clear. Um, in fact, look at a couple of scriptures with me. I'm going to come back to Acts 20 and verse 24, so put a piece of paper there, a finger there or something. And um, look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. You're in 2 Corinthians 4, just one page over from that. The Bible says, and of course we're very familiar with verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Verse 18, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And now notice, he hath given to us, what's the next two words, church? The ministry. He has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. So every one of us have a ministry. All of one of us are in the ministry. In fact, the Bible says in Ephesians 4 that God gives to the church pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints or the the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. And so all of us are involved in that ministry. Now, the, the goal is to fulfill the ministry God's given to you. The goal is to finish the ministry that God's given to you. Every one of us, if you've been saved any length of time at all, you've known people who have started out in the ministry, started out serving God, started out as a believer in Christ, who tonight are not in church, and Sunday won't be in church, and they really don't do anything for God anymore. They haven't finished their ministry. But here's what Paul wrote, and again, back in verse 24 of Acts 20. Would you look there? Again, He says, none of these things move me, neither count on my life dear unto myself, that I might finish my course, what's the next two words? With joy. Paul says, I want to finish my course with joy. It was interesting as I was uh, doing some uh, study on this this afternoon. Can I I read to you uh, what some other versions have that verse to say? Um, In the New International Version, here's that verse. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Here's the New Living Translation. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus. The work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. Here's the popular ESV, the English Standard Version. But I do not account my life of any value, nor as precious to myself, if only I may finish my course in the ministry that I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify the grace, the gospel of the grace of God. And in every one of the new translations, they leave something out. Did you did you did you hear what it was? With joy. There, there's no joy there anywhere. Did you know there's a difference between finishing and finishing with joy? I don't just want to finish serving God. I want to finish serving God with joy. Uh, you know, there, there's a tendency... Hey, don't raise your hand, but you know, uh, probably everybody here knows some grumpy old man. You know what I mean? And now, don't, don't, don't poke your husband, ladies, all right? But, uh, you know, you say, yeah, I live with him. No, don't do, don't do that. But, you know what I mean? Just people, older people who just have been bittered by life. Don't be that person. And certainly as a child of God, we don't want to be that person. I don't, want to, I don't want to go through my life. I want to finish my course. I want to finish my ministry. But I want to do it with joy. 
And that's the goal. That's, that's the goal that Paul had. He wanted to fulfill that ministry. Now, Satan's goal is to get me out of the ministry. Out of the ministry. He would like to get, see us where we don't serve God anymore at all. But if, listen, if that doesn't happen, at least he could get us to go ahead and serve God, but be a grouch while we do it. And be hard to get along with while we do it. And be difficult to have a terrible disposition while we do it. I, I want to have the right position, but there's nothing wrong with having the right position with the right disposition. That's quiet. You don't have to be ornery and, 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 and um, grumbling and murmuring while we serve the Lord. And so you want to fulfill the ministry with joy. Now, how can we finish with joy? What, what are some destroyers of the joy? What can take away the joy in our serving Jesus Christ? Well, the first thing is, number one on your paper tonight is, mediocrity mediocrity you know what that is status quo well that's okay well it'll do we use expressions like that for the work of god but the bible makes it clear that what we're to whatsoever our hand finds to do we're to do it with our might what it means is you give it the very best you can god deserves that he deserves the very best. In the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus gave, and takes up Matthew 5, 6, and 7, the, the undergirding truth there is, is very simply, don't settle for average. Don't settle for doing whatever, what everybody else does. You've heard it said by them of old time, and Jesus would say that. He said, but I say unto you. And did he, did he put the bar lower, or did he raise the bar higher? He always raised the bar higher. There's always a higher standard. It's not just to maintain, not just to settle, but always strive to be growing. Always strive to be improving. Now to be sure, growth is never easy. And change is never easy. And it's less easy as you get older to, to allow changes to come. But I, I, want to be, I want to be a better pastor now than I was 33 years ago. I want to be, you, you ought to desire to be a better, I want to be a better husband now than I was 33 years ago or 36 years ago. I want to be a better, better father now than I was when I first became a father. Why? Growing, changing, allowing God to work in my life. But there's nothing wrong with you desiring, hey, are you a better choir member now than you were last year or two years ago? Are you, are you a better usher now than you were when you first started ushering? Are you a better nursery worker now than when you first started working in nursery? You see, how, how are you growing? How are you changing? Or have you gotten mediocre and just decided, oh, I'm here, oh, that'll do. Or when you, whatever job it is you have to do, are you preparing your lesson like you used to prepare your lesson for Sunday school? You're preparing for your children's church like you used to prepare where you're, where you're studying and seeking God? Somebody came to me the other day and said someone's interested in maybe having a class or teaching, but he said, I don't, they don't think they can do it. I said, well, that's usually the kind that God will use. My experience through the years are the people who think they can do it, they fall flat on their face. Because they don't cry out to God and rely on God to help them do it. You, you think you can do it yourself. God will have you see that you can't, that, that won't work. So I want to be, I want to improve. I want to grow. I want God to change me. I want God to continue to work in my life. I don't want to settle for mediocrity. Okay? The, now the way that happens is read, work, study, observe. Read, work, study, observe. Read the Word of God. The Bible changes you. The Bible will change you. Work for the Lord. Study God's Word, but do this. Study other Christians. Study, you know, the Bible in, in the book of Titus, he instructs the older women to do what? Teach who? The younger women. 
to younger women in the church, you ought to be watching and observing the older ladies and see how they conduct themselves, see how they respond to things, see how they uh, uh, conduct themselves, see what they wear to church and don't wear to church. And begin to pattern your life from the older godly women. The same way with the young men and the older men. Nothing, that, that's, that's biblical. Let me ask you a question. Are you a better Christian now than you were at this time last year? If not, why not? Now, <clears throat> by, by better, I don't mean are you doing more? Okay? I don't define being a better Christian by doing more. Somebody said, well, if you're, you know, if you're reading less Bible than you were last year, if you're praying less than we were last year, and, you know, if, if, realize if you keep adding every year and say, okay, I read more Bible, and by the time you've been saved 40 or 50 years, you, that, all you're going to do is pray, read your Bible, and talk to people about Jesus. There's no time for anything else anyway. You, it's impossible to keep that up. So the, the idea isn't just to do more and then get so overloaded that you burn out. I, uh, you know, it, it used to bother me for years. I, I would hear that the life of an average soul winner in an independent Baptist church is three years. But you know, they'd say about three years, you'll see somebody come out on the visitation, come out soul winning, be involved, and in about three years, and they'll, they'll quit. So they're going. You think, why is that? See, I, that shouldn't be. I'm not trying to enlist people to serve God for three years. Okay? We want to we wanna finish with joy. It's a course, and it's, a, it's, not, a, it's not a sprint. This is a, this is a marathon we're in. And so it's not a matter of how fast can I get out of the gate or how fast I can run. How fast can I run and keep the pace up for the rest of my life and keep running the race that God has for me? I want to do the best that I can do. What destroys churches, what destroys individuals, oftentimes is just indifference. And we begin to just settle for mediocrity. And we settle for less than our best. We lose our desire. We lose our passion to be the best we could be for God. And that's when trouble's going to come. We have to rise above that. We have, to, we have to ask God to help us with that. So Lord, I don't want to be just okay. I don't just want to settle for average. I don't want to look at something and say, that's good enough. No, no, no. God doesn't deserve good enough. God deserves the best. And so we, we cannot settle for mediocre. We cannot settle for average. It'll rob you of your joy. All right, the second thing that can take away our joy is materialism. Materialism. That, that, that gets into the realm of covetousness. Covetousness. Exodus 20, 17, one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not covet. Covet is, is listen, wishing for things that we do not have. Wishing for things that we do not have. And by the way, thinking that we're suffering because we don't have them. Not just wishing for things that we don't have, but we're thinking we're suffering because we don't have them. That's covetous. You're in. Go back to the book of Mark, would you please? Mark chapter 4. <clears throat> Mark 4 is uh, one of the accounts that Jesus gives of the parable of the sower. It's in Mark 4. It's also over in Luke chapter 8. And in Mark 4, notice he's, he's giving the interpretation of the sower, and the, the seed and the sower. He starts in verse 14 where he tells you the sower sows the word, and he talks about who those are by the wayside in verse 15. In verse 16, he talks about those that were sown on stony ground and talks about that group of people. Then in verse 17, it, it talks about, again, they have no root in themselves. Verse 18, notice this. This is the third group. These are they that are sown among thorns. Here they are, such as hear the word, but what happens? The cares of this world, 
and the deceitfulness of riches and the lusts of other things entering in. What's the next three words, church? Choke the word. What are they? Choke the word. And it becometh unfruitful. You know why? Sometimes you don't have any desire or no appetite for the word of God. Cares of the world. Deceitfulness of riches. And the lusts of other things. Have occupied you. And you're so full of those things. You try to put the word of God in and it just chokes. You have no appetite for it. It'll choke the word right out of your life. There's no room for it. In, in Luke, it says, They which fell among the thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. It's so easy to get caught up in the things of this life and neglect the things that are really important, which are the things of the next life. What do we get caught up in? Vehicles, houses, hmm? furniture, clothes, hmm? gadgets, computers, smartphones, iPads. We get all, all caught up in, in the latest gadgets we can get. Gehazi eye got caught up in the gold and the garments and everything that Naaman wanted to offer to his master and he got to coveting those. Thinking that he's suffering without them. And so he goes back to get them. You see, materialism. Materialism. It's, it's listen, it's, it, it, it kills our churches. I read an article this week. We have more. It's in, how, many think, how many think America's more spiritual now than it was 50 years ago? Nobody. Just read an article this week. I think it was the top 50. It might have been 75 churches. They called them the most influential churches in America is what the article said. But I think all of them ran over 5,000 on a Sunday. There are more what they call mega churches than ever in the history of our country. Yet our influence seems to be less. So do we step back and say, what's wrong with the picture? What's going on? And, and oftentimes, it steps right back to this materialism. How many times do our, do our missionaries have to take four and five years to, to raise money for deputation because there's just no money in the budget to give to missionaries because we got $6,000 a month just to pay for this mortgage we got. We got to build our family life center. We got to build this or build that. And I'm not opposed to having buildings, but listen, what, what, what's the important thing? When the Lord comes, we're not taking the buildings with us. We're taking souls to heaven. The gospel's to go to the end of the earth. To look at our, and, and, and that's not only on a corporate level as a church, but it's individual level. A lot of times there isn't money available because we've been caught up in materialism. And we know there's no money because the, this is due and that's due and this payment has to be made and that payment has to be made and uh, take care of all our stuff. And there are people whose cars will be out in the snow this winter because their garage full of stuff. And they can't move it to the storage place because that's full of stuff. But we got plenty of stuff. While a world, half the world has never heard of Jesus Christ. Materialism. Materialism will, will knock you out. It'll, it'll take the joy right out of your service. It'll knock you out of service completely. So we have, so far, the uh, me mediocrity and we have the materialism, the thing that can rob us of our joy and keep us from finishing our course with joy is our meditations. Meditations. Psalm 19, verse 14, Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Let me ask you a question. Don't say anything out loud. 
What do you think about? Don't say nothing. Okay? Because you're always thinking about something. Something's going to occupy your, your, your heart. And we're not, we, we, think, we think we think up here, but really you think in your heart, in the core of your being. That's where the meditation takes place. The unexplained time, the unaccounted for time, the moments when you're alone. They say that the percentage now of men that will struggle with pornography is up to nearly 50%. Not, not in the world, in churches. Inside of church. So what do we think about when we're alone? And it's so accessible and it's so easy, but it will destroy you. It will destroy your life. You are what you think. You overcome evil, how? With good, Romans 12, 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. You will not overcome evil by saying, I won't do that, I won't do that, I won't do that, I won't do that. You'll do that. Why? Because you're thinking about it. You're keeping it in your thought. You have to shove that evil out with the good thoughts. Stay busy doing what's right. Stay busy doing what you should do. Be accountable. You're always in trouble when you're off the radar. Nobody knows what I'm doing. Nobody knows where I am. Nobody, I'm unaccounted for. I can look at what I want, watch what I want, do what I want. Nobody knows it. Be careful. Be careful. You have to allow somebody in. Don't keep secrets. Meditations. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Your thinking determines your living. You'll never live right until you begin to think right. And so you have to guard your thoughts. And, and don't, when, when you're in idle mood, and by the way, when you watch television, you're in idle mood. And you allow whatever you see to push your mind and to fill your mind with whatever they want. That's why, that's why sometimes when people get upset or they, 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 some, some pain comes upon them, they let out a curse word. And they'll say, don't know where that came from. Yeah, you let it in sometime. You let it in through this, this ear gate sometime. And what's down in the well is coming up in the bucket at some point. And it'll come. What do you meditate on? What are you thinking on? And the RU program, that's why they have the, the, medi the meditation cards. You write the Bible verses out. You write things on those cards and you carry them with you. Why? So that when you're standing in line or you're sitting in line or you have, you have time where, when your mind could just wonder and think about something that you should not think about, you're not going to let that happen. You are going to fill your mind with good things. And you'll overcome evil with good. And so you have to fill your mind. That's what Philippians 4, 8 is all about. Think on these things. When you think on these things, think of filling that, that, that battlefield of your mind and your heart with, with good soldiers. And as long as they're occupying the field, the bad soldiers can't get in. There's no time for them. There's no room for them. So we have mediocrity, we have materialism, we have meditations. Number four is maliciousness. Maliciousness. It's called malice in 1 Peter 2 and verse 1. In fact, you can turn there with me if you would please. 1 Peter 2 and verse number 1. Wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, has newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. And again, it's, it's much like Psalm 1, verse 1 and verse 2. 
We, we like to go right to verse 2 and say, as a newborn babe, desire to see milk of the world. word. But if you don't do verse 1, you'll never do verse 2. If you don't put away or lay aside the malice and the guile and the hypocrisies and the envies and evil speakings, you're never going to desire the sincere milk of the Word that you can grow. You have to put off before you can put on. Now malice is wishing bad for somebody else. It's harboring ill will for another. Now that usually happens when you've been hurt. Hurting people hurt people. When you say someone just intentionally trying to say something that you know they're just saying it to try to hurt you, just step back. Instead of getting angry, instead of throwing back something that's going to hurt them worse, and just say they're saying that because they're hurting. And boy, if you can break through that and let them know, you understand, I understand you're hurting. Boy, sometimes that just breaks them. Because someone's not lashing out at them. See? And, and someone's genuinely caring about them. So he says we put away the malice. Saul. Saul got hurt. When he came back from the battle and they were all singing, Saul has slain his thousands, and he thought that was pretty good. But the song didn't end there, did it? No, David has slain his tens of thousands. Now, he got angry, but at first that he, he got hurt. That they would love David more than they love him. And he got really discouraged. And he got hurt, and so he got very angry. And by the way, he lived the rest of his time angry, frustrated, bitter, suspicious, old man. He wasn't pleasant to be around at all. So we put away the malice. Guile, we put away guile. Guile is being crafty, it's being cunning, it's being deceitful. Put away the deceitfulness, put away the manipulation. We put away hypocrisies. The word hypocrite, you know, comes from. The word where you put the mask on. You know, sometimes in those old movies you'd see the, the sad mask and the funny mask. Those masks, that's how they used to do it. They used to put those masks up in front and you're pretending to be something that you aren't. Don't put away the hypocrisies. Put away the envies. Envy is uneasiness. Envy is discontent. It's discontent at the happiness or the success of others. Of somebody else. That's envy. Envy is where, where you can't rejoice with somebody that's rejoiced. Somebody gets a blessing and gets a raise. Or somebody gets a blessing and they, they're able to get some, some uh, material thing. And you think, how come I couldn't have one of those? How come I didn't get one of those? I didn't do that. And, and we get envious. Or, or they get recognized for doing something. And you say, well, I worked as hard as they did. And the pastor didn't say my name. You get envious over recognition. Envious that someone else gets recognized and you didn't. You see, put away the envy. Put away the desire, that, that discontentment when someone else gets honored. When someone else gets a blessing. And then he said, all evil speakings. Did you notice how many times just in that one verse, all malice, all guile, all evil speakings. I think he's trying to emphasize something. Don't, don't leave anything. Don't, don't leave anything. Get rid of it. Don't speak evil of somebody else. Oh. 
probably, you know, I was got well, <laughs> probably you could have a presidential debate over in about 30 minutes if we just cut out all the evil speaking. Quit, don't talk bad about anybody else. And we'd, we'd, we'd cut, cut right to what, all we need to know. But listen, Christian, don't talk bad about somebody else. You have, you have so many times we can say something and we have no idea what the other person's going through. We have no idea what they're dealing with. And, and, and so, we, when, by the way, we, we don't know. Somebody says, oh, I know what they were thinking. You don't know what they were thinking. Because only God knows their heart. And so you have to make sure that we don't have evil speaking. You have to put off before you put on. When you, if you harbor these things, not only will you never desire the milk of the word, but listen, these things will destroy you. Malice, envy, guile, hypocrisies, evil speakings, they will destroy your life. When Saul got the malice, when he got the ill will towards David, who did it destroy? David? It destroyed Saul. It destroyed his life. When Haman got the malice toward Mordecai, did it destroy Mordecai? No. It destroyed Haman. And when you get malice or ill will or want to speak evil of someone, listen, it's not going to destroy them. It's going to destroy you. So lay it aside. Put it off. And replace it with what? Yeah. Desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Take the word of God and desire it. Let's, let's finish with joy. Finish the course with joy. We want to not let my mediocrity, listen, I don't want mediocrity to take away from the excellence. I want to strive for excellence for the Lord Jesus. He deserves the best. Mediocrity will take that away. I'm not going to let, I, want, I don't want materialism to replace contentment. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Be content with such things as you have. I don't want meditations to take away from my purity. And I don't want maliciousness to replace graciousness. Don't lose being gracious. What's grace? Grace is where, where God bestows upon us that which we do not deserve. So what, when we're gracious to someone else, what are we doing for them? Giving them something that they don't deserve. So don't, don't, don't <clears throat> go back at them with the same attitude or response that they might come at you if it's no a soft answer will turn away wrath you can go back with grievous words if you want but you're just going to stir up more anger graciousness I think if we will follow that we can fulfill our ministry with joy with joy I want to be I want to be happy in the service of the king and that's the goal, is, is to be happy in the service of the king. Hey, not just for a year or two, not just for a year or two or three or four or five, but finish with joy. Faithful unto death. And be happy in the service of the king. Let's finish our course with joy. Amen? Let's stand together and we'll have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray you'll take the truth now this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the plainness of your word. Lord, thank you for the example that we read of the Apostle Paul. And certainly, he went through much more hardship than we could ever imagine that we would ever go through in our life. 
But he not only finished his course, he finished his course with joy. And I pray, Lord, you'd help each of us to, by your Spirit, not allow these things to come in and rob us of the joy. Take away our ministry. Or allow us to have a ministry where it lacks the joy of the Lord. I pray the joy of the Lord would be our strength. I pray that we'd be yielded to the Holy Spirit of God and that the fruit of the Spirit of love and joy, peace, long-suffering and the gentleness and the goodness and the faith and the meekness and the temperance would show through our lives now and all the way till you call us home or we go up to meet you in the clouds. Help us to finish our course with joy. We love you. We thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you for being our God. We're glad we're your people and that we can serve you with the life you've given to us. Dismiss us now with your care, Lord, and make us mindful you go with us from this place. And Lord, may others see Christ in us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Let's sing that chorus together. You got that? Let's hear you say it. Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard, it's recorded in God's Word. Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? God bless you. You are dismissed.